John here guys, and today we're talking about the Rush Solo Tank. Just when I thought I was done with Analog, just when I thought it was out, Rush comes out with a new top of the line premium ultra crazy analog video transmitter and they pull me back in. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. <laughs> huh? I did have this FR7 long range that I built up. The review may or may not be up on the channel yet, um, but it's coming very soon if it's not. And I didn't really love the type of reception I was getting from the AKK Race Ranger. Now that is a full size premium uh, VTX with a heatsink also, but I was getting a little bit of fuzz and it just wasn't the best. So Rush sent me over one of these. I really like the logo. It looks kind of like Han Solo. I went ahead and slapped it in this bad boy and I didn't even have to make any special modifications of my own to it. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. It's really easy to wire up. I love when VTXs have a little connector like that. I do like it a little better if they have connector and pads, but this one has the connector, so it makes it really easy to install. You just solder up your four wires to your flight controller and then you're good to go. Now, I did still get a little bit of that breakup that I was getting, a little bit of that static. It's probably something to do with my build or these giant motors. I've not really been flying much seven inch, so maybe that's part for the course. I just wasn't used to any breakup at all anymore since I've been flying primarily DJI, but that's just kind of how it goes with analog. If I was gonna go far out, um, combining it with this true RC OCP antenna that sticks well above, you see no matter which direction you're facing, you're gonna have a clear reception to this antenna um, and the battery's not gonna block it. So if you are gonna do something long range, be sure to get a big antenna like that. It pairs perfectly with it. This has a flat side, so it's really easy to mount with some double-sided tape. You just stip it on there. This thing has a variety of modes. I really like the tactile push in plastic uh, rubbery type buttons. It's a really premium feeling. It made it really easy to be able to change your power levels and whatnot. Of course, you can also do smart audio. I haven't really messed with smart audio in forever again since I've been on DJI. Um, I've paired this with the Foxier Cat camera, which is probably one of the best analog cameras on the market. I really like it because it has a huge lens. It's almost as big as the Zeiss lens I'm shooting this on right now. So this thing goes up to 800 milliwatts, but in the instruction manual right here, it says that the color red is for 800 milliwatts, color purple is for the max. So max, what power level is that purple rain uh, power level? I don't know. I didn't go there because I don't know how exactly high they're pushing this thing. Purple rain, purple rain. I just left it at red and that was plenty good for me. I got really nice range out of it. I'm not a long range guy. I'm not about to fly any quad farther than I'm comfortable going to walk. And uh, even though I have lost a good bit of weight during the quarantine period, it's not because I've been exercising. So I didn't feel like having to take a two to three mile hike if case something bad happened. So I generally stayed fairly close. And uh, But if you were going to go long range, I would be confident to get this one. This is probably one of the last analog builds I'm going to do. I just don't like it. You know, this is the best analog camera and VTX combination really on the market, but it still feels like, you know, flying Brussels sprouts at the dinner table. It feels like punishment. I'm sorry, guys. But if you are still on that analog kick, if you don't want to have to worry about where DJI performs well or not, if you just want to set it and forget it, never have to worry about your range. You don't mind a little breakup as long as you can go farther. You don't mind a little static as long as your image is not going to pixelate. You guys know who you are, you analog heads. Then this is probably the best analog VTX on the market. It comes with an MMCX2 SMA adapter. I love that. Oh, I always have to buy those separate with other brands. And it also comes with its own little dipole antenna. So even if you don't have an antenna, this has an antenna. This is a premium price. I think it's like 40 or $44 or something like that, making it up there in the range. But by the time you get a premium camera, 
let's see, $44 for this. Premium camera is about $44, that's 90 bucks. Get an antenna for about 15 bucks. You're talking about 105, 110 bucks for this premium analog setup versus a DJI, which would be about 150. So it is coming closer, but if you don't wanna have to have any worries and you wanna be able to blast large amounts of power, that heat sink is gonna keep everything cool and um, I really like that they're putting heat sinks on these things. They look really fantastic. So nice job on this rush. Um, if you're looking for analog stuff, check that out. What do you think in the comments, guys? Are you flying all DJI? Or are you still maintaining your long range stable and analog? I really think if you wanted the max range, I mean, there's no question about it. Analog's better. And if you wanted the best of the analogs, this is it. Thanks, guys.